And there we have it. That's basically our wing right there. It's fine. Kyle! I don't think it's fine. You know, w welcome, welcome back to my show. Kind of a big deal, got my own show. Uh, we build, you know, not very good things here. But welcome back to the show. Today I kind of like beavered my way into borrowing this 3D scanner. It's kind of fancy looking. And I'm hoping that we can like, you know, scan the whole body and chassis as it sits so we can build stuff around it. My chassis is not symmetrical. And even when I plotted it in Fusion 360, the measurements were all rough. But this, if we can scan the thing and like, do the thing that we can build exactly around what we have here. Sounds good in theory, but like practicality, probably not, not good. Not to mention, I've never used this thing before. And like most men, I'm probably not gonna read the instructions and I'm just gonna start using it. I'm gonna get frustrated with it. Probably wanna throw it somewhere. And then, you know, oh my God, look at all those things on there. We'll see what happens. It feels like a, like a Nintendo. All right, we're gonna just gonna, I'm gonna leave the camera here. I'm just gonna walk around and see what happens here. Well, we lost the tracking. We'll see what we got out of it though. Oh my God, okay. So we can, we can kind of work with that, I think. All right, after walking around for like 10 minutes. That looks like our cart to me. That is going to be very useful for building the body now. All right, see if we get that on my PC now. Shit, that was so cool, man. You wanna know what else is so cool? My new True North Turbo. This is the new bad boy, 400 frame, 92 millimeter. This is going on my orange car, the Sun Goku car. True North Turbos, this is our own company. So if you wanna help out the channel and you guys are interested in turbos or whatever, go check out blacksheepindustries.ca. We have all kinds of stuff on there, blow off valves, wastegates, turbos, all that good stuff. Everything but the turbos, 10% off with the code boosted lifestyle at checkout. So go check it out. Like, I can't wait to run this thing. This is like, you know, proven 1500 wheel horsepower turbo. Don't need it, gonna use it. All right, so we're generating the mesh here. It says it's gonna take a while, so I plugged it in. Uh, we'll see what it comes with, see if we can get it on the PC after that, and then see what we can build, you know, around the actual body part. So between having the 3D scanner and the 3D printer, and finally learning how to use Fusion 360, I do feel like that we're on the right path to making a body for this thing. I've come a long way. Now, I don't know how to explain this, but like that isn't my forte and it's not what I do. So learning something new is, it feels kind of cool, a little bit overwhelming at the same time, but thank you to the community, everybody who joined the Discord server from last video, the link is down below for it. And everybody's had like awesome input. People have been posting photos of their concepts for the body, giving me ideas, working with me. It's been pretty amazing. It's also probably time to change this number. Over a third way to a million. That's actually kind of sick. What it really means is that there's just like a third of a million weirdos out there. Oh my God, it made a mesh for us. This is crazy. Oh, look at it. Oh my God. This came out way better than I thought it was gonna, like with the spots that were plotted, it was really like bumpy and stuff, but like after it's smooth, it looks exactly like the cart. All right, so I've got Gina behind the camera here. We did make one scan and I did show you guys that one, but I'm gonna try and get a more detailed scan of everything. See if we can make it just a little bit better here. So right now I'm getting all the tire too, cause my last one didn't have the tire. The tire and the rim. Look, it started putting the cart like that way. What the frick? Sad. So I gotta redo it again now. I don't know why it fucked up, but it did. All right, so we have the 3D scan uploaded onto the computer. We'll deal with that later. But to address the front, I need to put a wing on it. So in order to put a wing on it, I've got to put some sort of structure up there that we can mount the wing to, because it's got to hold, you know, so much downforce in the front. I was gonna integrate it into like the 3D print, but uh, having it adjustable is probably better for aerodynamics. So I'm gonna build like a tubular structure in the front here for the front wing, and then we can move on to 3D scanning it again. So the tube structure is gonna be in our 3D scan so that we can model around that. A lot of complicated steps to build a body apparently. What I am gonna do, however, though, I'm gonna take all the wheels off it. I'm gonna move the chassis back, put it down on top of the chassis, and then that way we have a flat surface beyond the nose here uh, to build the wing so we know that it's level with the rest of the chassis. Can you just pull this off the end maybe? That'd be so I mean, it's just gonna fall down. Oh, this wasn't the smartest spot to stand. Like if anything happened and the table broke, it was like, my wiener's gone. It's definitely gonna be easier to build off the table like this. 
Oh my god! Gina! Gina's art? Hell yeah. Gina, all Gina's art is for sale on her art shop. I have an art shop now. So that'll be down in the comments if you want to get some of Gina's art. It's my comment house painting as a print. Ta-da. Ta-da. So here's our tube jig right here. It's gonna just go like that. I'll put a tube in it and then we can build off of this. But we need to screw this evenly in the middle of the table in the front here. And I was trying to figure out how I could find the center of like the distance of this. So I just took a welding rod, marked it. I'm gonna hold it there. Put the marker in the end here. And wherever these two marks cross, that should be the center. So right there. We got it all sorted and in place. It's screwed into the table. So it's actually more sturdy than I thought it was gonna be for how high it is. But for building the next chassis, this is gonna be like so important. I could just put a bunch of these in the table and then I know my bars just have to like line up in the gaps. So for the entire chassis, I've been going within like, you know, half a percent. The table is at 0.04 degrees and our piece is at 0.09. So I'm gonna call that good. It's straighter than the hole in chassis is, I can guarantee you that much. It is a little bit loose in there, so I'm gonna wrap a little bit of electrical tape around it just to give it a bit of bite so it doesn't move a little bit. So mark this out, get it center line, put our top piece on, and then just build from here to there in a little triangle. I did make this a lot higher that way, build verticals down from this. And then they can be unbolted so that if you need to take the front wing off, you can take the front wing off too. It's a little bit loose in there. I probably put a little bit more tape in it, but honestly, it's pretty damn good. All right, let's knot some tube. Okay, but well, like, hear me out. Jigs are pretty awesome. Like, that's pretty sick. And then number two, just because this is my first time using a jig and I don't really want to cut up anything else, we're going to just pull it in slightly just to take up the slack. That's, that's perfect, awesome. All right, tack weld that in place. It's like perfect. Not a gap to be seen anywhere. I love that for me. That doesn't happen often, but maybe it'll start happening more that I'm using jigs. Woo, crazy. Crazy concept, Kyle. All right, there's our wing structure made. It's made out of one inch steel. It's like 100 wall, it's pretty damn thick. I bet you even just with the tack welds right here, if I stood on the end, you know, without the support piece there, I bet you it, it wouldn't break. I'm not gonna do it just in case it does break. That'd be a lot of work. And I don't wanna redo it again. But my plan now from here is to add another bar, probably like four inches or like 100 millimeters away. And then I can build plates that capture both of these bars. And they'll come down basically almost just like how this is coming down, but just two vertical plates. And then the wing will just go across into those plates. And then that's how we'll do our wing. So I'll make some bolts somewhere midway so we can unbolt it. If we ever want to change like the wing or the wing angle, or we have to do anything, change wing profiles, whatever, the wing will be removable in the front. So we can work with like the aero balance of the car if we need to. At first I was gonna make the whole nose removable, but I've never seen how it's done. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna do it that way. Just to make things easy and get the ball rolling. And then that way we can just take the skills, build a removable nose on version two and move on with, you know, our life. Okay, I've got most of it like tack welded up. I've, I've welded, you know, probably a quarter of each bar in here. We should be able to take our jig off. Dang. Now, technically I should be able to stand on this and it shouldn't break, which. which means it should hold the weight of the downforce from our wing. I'll put two bars here. I'm gonna build a plate that like basically captures both of these bars that I can weld in place and it's gonna come straight down. And then we're gonna 3D print a bunch of wing elements and run two bars through these plates. And then the wing elements are just gonna slide over top of those bars to make the wing. So imagine it's gonna come down like this and it's gonna have a one inch hole in it. And we're gonna put the bar through that hole. Mm -hmm. so there's gonna be two of these. Sure. And then we're gonna 3D print a bunch of like wing shaped elements that are gonna have like a one inch hole in them that you can just slide over the end of this bar. So then it's just gonna like, you stack a piece here, stack a piece here, stack a piece here, and it's shaped like a wing. Mm, okay. So we'll actually have two bars, like a, a bigger bar and a smaller bar, just cause of the wing profile. But that's essentially how it's gonna work. It's just gonna drop down from here. A couple of bars are gonna slide through and that's gonna be 
our wing. Okay, so I 3D printed this piece. This is PPA carbon fiber. It is relatively strong and you can see that it matches like our airfoil right here. Plus it has this little vertical riser. So the original plan is something like this, but I cut it in half right here because I want it to bolt together so we can make two pieces of the wing. So a metal piece is going to get welded to these two bars, like the top right here. And then it's gonna be able to bolt this bottom piece on to that piece. Then these two rods are gonna run the length of the cart of the wing and then airfoil pieces that look kind of like this they'll just be you know 200 mil long or 250 mil long those will just slide over our end pieces and they will go and butt up against that piece this one warped a little bit on me so i still have to figure out my uh, asa filament but essentially it's going to be like this and then this airfoil is just going to extend all the way out to where the wheel is but first we're gonna stress test this PPA carbon fiber and see like how much weight it can actually handle. Here's our setup. If you think this is a little jank, then you know, it probably is. We have some, you know, clevises holding everything in place and a ratchet strap around the legs so we can just lift the hoist and it'll start pulling on it. This maxes out at 880 pounds, something like that. So we'll see if we can get close to that number. Now I've already talked with the guys in the Discord and we've already agreed we're not gonna use PPA carbon fiber for this part just because of the fatigue over time with the composite. So we will make these out of aluminum, but just for testing purposes, we're gonna see how strong it is. There's 240 pounds. 470 pounds, 500 pounds. That's 600 pounds. Those straps are tight. I don't know if I want to stand right here. It looked like it started, like I heard something. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Little over 700 pounds. I knew it was gonna break here too, just cause of the gap. So like impact forces could definitely get over 700 pounds. You could see how thin this piece is right here on the bottom of the hole. That's just because the wing profile itself is a little bit thinner because the actual airfoil only goes like straight across from here to straight across there. So this is actually halfway in between the airfoil. The actual distance of that hole that we just broke was 4.3 mil. So 4.3 mil held on to roughly 700 pounds. We could definitely move that hole to the upper side of the, the wing element if we wanted, or even make this a little bit thicker, but uh, we'll just make them out of aluminum just to stay safe. This one's actually glass filled ABS. I just find it prints so much easier. It's nicer. Uh, I cut out two pieces of plate on the arc droid. They're over here on the bench, clean them up a little bit. And now I'm gonna transfer over the airfoil hang down part into our two pieces. And those two pieces actually get welded on right here. So we'll drill those out, weld those pieces on, and then the airfoil piece, then this piece can hang down and we can put our rods through it and then put our uh, wing pieces through it. All right, bolted in place. Let's see if we can feed this through here. Oh my God. That might be a little bit long, but shove this one through. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, we're gonna make a wing. And then these should actually give some strength to these metal rods too, once they're all bolted together. Because then the metal rod is technically not able to like flex inside of there. And then all we have to do is print a piece this wide in the middle, that'll fill that gap right there for the wing. Oh my God. Dang, I did goof up a little bit. These are supposed to be 80 millimeters lower because it's supposed to be, you know, basically the wing is supposed to be level with the bottom of the cart, just how I designed it. So this is 90 millimeters off the ground. The bottom of the cart's 90 millimeters off the ground. But each one of these airfoils is taking, for 250 mil, it's taking about 10 to 12 hours to print. So I do have to make you know, probably six or seven of these. Okay, we swapped out these plates here. These are just test plates. These ones are also just test plates, but they dropped down 80 millimeter lower. So now the wing sits, you know, 80 millimeters off of the ground. And we're just printing out a bunch of our pieces. You can see that we made a bunch more there. We are gonna be putting a second element in this too. So I'm gonna make another, you know, slide on attachment here. That's gonna come up basically like that and create our second element. And then the end plate will hold the other part of the second element. So we're just determining the width we want for that piece on the end, including the end plate and that little mount bracket. 
So just trying to get everything so I can print it all out pretty good. It looks pretty awesome. So we've, we've got this part going and we're doing the nose cone almost at the same time. All right, here's basically everything proved out in our concept. We just need to like, you know, fill the gaps with more 3D prints, but this is essentially how it's gonna look. We do have to get these vertical pieces made out of aluminum. We've got these pieces right here. We're also gonna get made out of aluminum. They support the second element here. This second element can actually adjust because I slotted it. And then this is the end plate, which is like a, a lot smaller than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this big rectangle piece, but this is the max my printer would print. So we just cut it out just to mock up, making sure it's gonna fit. Okay, so we've got four carbon rods here. I just caught that. All right, how are we gonna do this? All right, four carbon rods here. Uh, these are going to go through the upper element. And it's gonna sandwich all that together. And then obviously we're gonna put a fiberglass or whatever on top of this. For the rods themselves, they have no threading in them. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these rib nuts here and I have some like JB Weld epoxy. I'm gonna epoxy the rib nuts in there and then I'm actually gonna squeeze the rib nuts in there too to like really hold the rod. And I really hope that works because that's all I've got. I think I'm just gonna epoxy inside the tubes. Just a bunch of it, swirl it everywhere. Hopefully it doesn't dry really fast. And I'm just gonna put these in here so they snug and they don't really break the carbon. It's gonna be a really like by feel thing going on here, I think. Now we should be able to put the entire length of this upper element in here. Now it isn't perfectly like, you know, lined up everything right now. And there's only one element over here, but dang, that's cool. So obviously these end plates are gonna be a little bit longer, taller. This is just all I can fit in my 3D printer. Same with this one here. It's gonna extend like, and have a radius to it and whatever, and go all the way up to the top there. All right, I'm just gonna chuck our big long rods here in the lathe. Fortunately, they do fit in the lathe, but I'm just gonna square off the ends to make sure that when I put the rib nuts in, they're, they're flush and the bolts don't go in sideways, so. Uh, it's, it's fine. Kyle! I don't think it's fine. I don't, I don't think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit slower? Nope. I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure that worked. I'm pretty sure it squared it up. Uh. I can see you trying so hard to get it square. Did you get it? I think so. Nice. Is this wind going to be strong enough? I don't know. There's only one way to find out, though. Cool, though. That, like, I'm making my own wing. Like, I never thought this is something that I would ever do. I'd be like, just buy a wing. But now we're making them. You make it away. Imagine, because then that would change everything. Because we just make wings for everything that we want then. Instead of having to buy like a wing that like maybe kind of fits. Possibilities, endless. Beginningless. And there we have it. That's basically our wing right there. I am probably gonna go over it with, you know, fiberglass or carbon, and it does need the aluminum uprights everywhere. But besides that, you know, it does flex a little bit. But I don't know how much pressure I'm putting over here. And is that at the amount of pressure the downpour is gonna make? But like right here, you know, pretty damn solid. It's a big, mean wang. Now, by the time this video is out, we will already be moved into our new house. So there is gonna be a little bit of a delay, you know, getting all of this moved to the other house, all of the stuff inside the house moved to the other house, but it is gonna be worth it in the long run. So we're gonna take a little bit of time, move, and then we'll have our area to do like our composites and stuff. So if you guys are loving the build, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace easy, get that beat.